welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelsey and I'm here today to do my February wrap up. Oh hi, thanks for checking in. I'm still a piece of garbage. So starting at the beginning of the year, I did want to include mid-month wrap-ups, but for this month, I did a vlog where I read five books out of the 12. So I will leave a link up in the cards for the first five books I read in the month of February, and we will get into the other seven books I read in this video. In terms of stats, like I said, I read 12 books this month, seven of which will appear in this video. In regards to star ratings, I had a really bad month. So there were zero five star books, three four star books, six three star books, two two star books, and one one star book, which brings my average rating to 3.12, which is why I was very sluggish this month. I didn't really want to read after that video that I've already linked, so in regards to other stats, the total page count for the month was 4,414, which averages to about 157 pages per day. In regards to the gender of the authors I read this month, I read 11 female authors and one author that I'm unsure of their pronouns. Nine of the books I read were adult, three of them were YA, and in regards to the format of those books, three of them were audiobooks, six of them were ebooks, and three of them were physical books. So let's get into the reads. The first book, which is probably the start of my slum for the month, was, hold on, this title is a bit long, Violet Bent Backwards Over the Grass by Lana Del Rey. So this book is essentially a poetry book from Lana Del Rey, and the poetry book really dives into California, and there's a lot of poems about living in California, the overall like nature aspect of California in regards to the tech aspect of California, there's a lot of discussions on that. But I'm just going to go into this and say that I gave it a two stars. I really didn't enjoy it. So listen, I was definitely a Tumblr Lana Del Rey fangirl and I was definitely super excited when I realized that this came out because like I said, I was really into her music once upon a time ago. I immediately put myself on the hold list at my library and I was just like eagerly anticipating reading this. I clicked it open, read 20 pages and immediately clicked out. So what I like to do when I'm unsure about my rating for a book is look at five star or one star reviews of the book I am unsure about and I saw like a slew of five star reviews. Most people were really praising the beauty in her words and so I decided to pick it back up again because like I said I loved her music, I love her songs and that comes with what I thought was going to be the perfect tie into poetry so I decided to pick it back up again and I wanted to put it back down at the 50 page mark. I read that this book was only supposed to be sold in California bookshops and I definitely think it should have stayed that way. There was nothing in this book that I felt was profound for people that are living outside of the Golden State. There were definitely like some lines I related to but I think if you're going into this thinking that it would be like one of her albums I definitely would stray away from it. Half of the time I would read the poems and I had no idea what they were trying to say. Honestly this was just a really super disappointing poetry collection for me and maybe modern poetry does go a bit over my head sometimes but alas super disappointing i'm really sad about it and ended up not really enjoying it then as for a book i did enjoy we have becoming by michelle obama this is michelle obama's memoir that goes over her life in the south side of chicago where she grows up to then going to university and becoming a lawyer meeting barack obama and then becoming the first african-american first lady i want to start off this review by saying that if you can read this on audio i definitely would recommend because michelle obama reads it herself and it was just a lovely listening experience. I was very surprised at how vulnerable Michelle Obama was. She continually explained her struggles in youth, her struggles as this very ambitious mother, her struggles in marriage, and how her and Barack Obama worked to solidify and create this strong marriage, and her arduous struggles of living in the White House and being the First Lady of the United States. I really appreciated the honest approach that Michelle Obama took in this book at explaining her life and how she got where she is today it was extremely refreshing. As a Canadian, I did feel a little disjointed about the political side of the memoir and the moves in their careers that they've made to get them to where they are today, and I found myself really sad at the end of this book just knowing 
now in 2021 how the aftermath of their stay in the White House and how it unfolded afterwards. There are so many passages in the novel where Michelle focuses on supporting women and how she felt inspired through working and helping these women that in turn I found myself like smiling, I wanted to like clap while listening to the audiobook. My complaints on the novel focus on how there was a lot of this book that focuses on Barack Obama and while I do love the former president I just wanted to hear about Michelle's story and I understand that this is what it is to be happy and in a successful marriage but I was more invested in Michelle's story and how she worked to inspire younger women and I just wish that that part of the book was more developed. Overall I think this was a really beautiful novel and if you haven't read it yet I really urge you to do so especially on audio because like I said Michelle really puts emotion and vulnerability in it and I really love this. I gave it a four stars. The next book I read was an arc for The Conductors by Nicole Glover. This book follows a woman named Hetty and her husband Benjamin who are magic users and used to be conductors on the Underground Express Railway where they helped usher dozens of people from the southern United States up into the north. Now that they have retired that lifestyle they work to solve crime in their city in Philadelphia. So this book flip-flopped in terms of reading for me throughout the entire reading experience. The historical fantasy aspect about this was amazing as it follows ex-slaves after the abolition of slavery in the US who now work as this crime solving duo. However I do think the fantasy of the historical fantasy was what was underdeveloped throughout this book. The magic system while it was interesting because it's kind of based on zodiac signs and I've never seen that before so I thought that that was really interesting but it was really hard to understand and visualize because it isn't really explained it's just there. The main characters are also able to put magic into objects so for example one of the characters is able to sew magic into clothes but that too isn't really explained and it's again just there. I think Hetty and Benjamin were actually really great main characters. They had a lovely little like marriage to convenience to romance plotline that I really loved and I loved how they worked together to better their community. I really enjoyed how Glover wrote about people who escaped slavery and how they processed the trauma of escaping. Most of them were shown as happy and healthy and even though there was this like slew of murders going on in the plotline. The loving aspect of the community was something that I really appreciated in the novel. Throughout most of the book I was expecting this to be a four stars but I think the murderer of the murder plot point was fairly obvious 40% of the way through the book and I just didn't understand how Hetty and Benji weren't catching on, how they weren't seeing it. So even though the mystery is a little predictable I still would highly recommend this debut. I am extremely keen to see what Glover publishes next and I give this a 3.5 stars. Next we finally have lovely War by Julie Berry. This book has been on so many TBRs and I'm happy to say that I did read this and I'm happy to say that I really enjoyed this. Aphrodite and Ares are caught having an affair by Aphrodite's husband and let me read this because I don't know Greek gods enough but Hephaestus? I listened to this on audio and I still don't remember how this was pronounced. So basically she is caught having an affair with Ares and Hephaestus. I'm sorry if this is not how you pronounce it. Please don't come for me but he basically puts them on trial and he wants to take them to Mount Olympus so that all the other gods can judge them for their actions but Aphrodite says that if she can tell this weaving story about love and war her husband will be able to judge their trial. For Aphrodite's story it basically follows four characters Hazel, Colette, James and Aubrey in the story of them and how they fall in love with one another during World War One. So this was truly an amazing read and probably some of the most beautiful writing I have read all year. I mean it's only two months but the most beautiful writing I've read in the last two months. The four human main characters were all wonderfully developed and really pulled at my heart. Their love was beautiful yes but it was their hope that they would all find each other and be together again that really like warmed this cold bitch's heart. As a history nerd something I really appreciated about the novel was Barry's careful discussion on women and black individuals and how they took part in the war effort. This book did a really good job talking about both and lamenting the fact that these two groups were crucial to the war when they are barely discussed in most historical books, classes, 
whatever when i got to the author's note at the end it is very clear that barry did a lot of research and took a lot of careful time to put into this book to make sure that these stories were told properly additionally like i said i listened to this on audio and i thought it was really great i thought it was excellently done there was music composed for this audiobook each character had a different voice it really added to the overall listening experience of the book and i would highly recommend it in audio form as well the only reason that this did not get a five star from me is because it just didn't quite get to me in the end and thus the greek gods plot line the overarching narrative didn't tie up in a way that felt solid to me but other than that it was perfect and i gave this a 4.5 stars another exciting read for february one of my most anticipated reads of 2021 we have court of silver flames by sarah j mass oh my God. This book takes place after the first trilogy in the A Court of Thorns and Roses series. I don't know how long this is going to be, but this is a standalone book in that series that follows Feyre's sister Nesta after the effects of A Court of Wings and Ruin. And if you read A Court of Wings and Ruin, then you know that Nesta's plotline is heavily cemented on the fact that she experienced a lot of trauma. They all did, but Nesta and Elaine experienced a lot of trauma. So I won't go too much into what this book is about, but essentially Essentially, the A Court of Thorns and Roses series follows a character named Feyre when hunting food for her family, shoots a wolf in the forest and it turns out that this wolf is part of a fairy court and one of the rules of this court is that if you were to kill a fairy, the fairies have the right to kind of take you and keep you in their world and that's what happens to Nesta's sister Feyre. And of course the story unfolds from there and how Nesta ends up in the fairy realm. My feelings for this book are definitely like no thoughts head empty because I was just shocked when I finished this book. But firstly, I want to get into the fact that I really enjoyed this book because I love Nesta as a main character. Nesta is harsh, she's mean, she is a stone cold bitch. And I love her for that. She is exactly the type of character I love to read from. Definitely flawed, as you see from the adjectives I used to describe her. The anger and stuff that she holds in is because she cares about those around her. She is kind of like an angry softie, if you will. Additionally, I loved the way that Mass explores her character while showing the space that Nesta needed to make mistakes and learn from them. The relationships that she continued to grow in this novel and the ones that she created were really 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 interesting and amazing and I'm here to see how this moves forward into the rest of the series. I don't believe that the rest of the series follows Nesta as a main character although I wish it was so I'm just hoping that we kind of see these relationships flourish at least in the background of other books. I just want to butt in here and say that what I appreciated about these relationships is that they were female focused. So yes she does have relationships with her brother-in-law, with her love interest, but the relationships that I really appreciated was the female focused friendships. The women who work in the library who are victims of sexual violence and these relationships that Nesta forms with this woman, the empowerment that she kind of implicates within the library during her time there. Immaculate, very, very, very important and I would love to see that developed. It's those relationships that I would love to see developed. If you look at my Goodreads review for A Court of Wings and Ruin, I really didn't enjoy the way the first trilogy ended and it felt, it left a really sour taste in my mouth and I really didn't think I was going to read any more of this series but I'm happy to pick this up because Nesta, Cassian, Emery, and Gwyn were just amazing characters and really pulled the series up from the ground that I left it. <laughs> my one complaint is a complaint that I always have for every Sarah J Mass book that I read and that is her her pacing. Her beginnings are always really slow and there are like a couple of sex scenes sprinkled in here and there kind of randomly and then the endings always feel super fast paced. There's always like a duus ex machina type of shit that happens that saves the day and it just feels like completely off to me when I'm reading this book. Overall I did have a fantastic time reading this and way more than I've felt reading a mass novel in a while so very happy I picked this up and I gave it four stars. Then we unfortunately come to my first one star read of the year and that is Magic Mutant Nightmare Girl by Erin Grammer. I'm very disappointed by this. As you can see from the cover, it is absolutely adorable. I picked this up mainly because of the cover. Essentially, this book follows a girl named Holly who is very into the Lolita fashion and that is essentially like her only main quality. What ends up happening is that Holly encounters these like mutants in an alleyway and because of that encounter she is kind of like swept into this FBI mutant 
situation. It really makes me sad to give an advanced reader copy of a book such a low rating, but I really did not enjoy this book. My biggest complaint about the novel is that everything felt off in the book. The plot was so fast-paced and not in a good way. Things would happen without any real consequences or reasons to it and then we're suddenly thrust into this murder mystery with no explanation. In addition to this, Holly develops these superpowers which forces her to meet this group of people that I explained about before and then she suddenly like loves all of them in 290 pages which in the book's timeline is roughly three days. It made the novel very hard to understand. The characters were very one-dimensional and felt really flat to me. I felt like none of them had a real personality that wasn't surface level. I mean even Holly, all she is is someone who loves Lolita fashion really. And speaking of Holly, she was really hard to handle. I just talked about a flawed female main character that I think was done really well that I really enjoyed. Then you get to Holly and she was... <laughs> I love flawed characters but when they have a reason behind being flawed. I really didn't find that Holly had a reason to be generally just unkind and an unpleasant person to be around. Her actions were completely irrational. They never felt valid. There's one specific time where Holly kind of pushes on a sexuality onto two men that kind of felt like it came out of nowhere and just because one of them had a feminine tattoo on his body. And Holly is meant to be bisexual so you just think that the LGBTQ plus rep would be better than that, that a character who identifies as bisexual would be better than that. And I also personally found the bi POC rep in this to also be problematic. And while I can't speak for the rep myself, I do want to mention that it made me feel a tad uncomfortable. So all in all, this was a nice cover with a premise that excited me, but that's all it was. And I was really disappointed. And like I said, I gave this one star. And then the last book I read for the month of February was Out of the Blue by Sophie Cameron. If you watched my oldest owned book, TBR video which I'll link up above. This was the oldest owned book I think on my TBR so I'm very happy to have knocked this out of the park but alas it didn't really do much for me. A couple of weeks after the death of Jaya's mom, angels start falling from the sky at incredible speeds and dying once they reach earth. There is no explanation to it and it happens at random seemingly around the world. One day Jaya's father decides to take his family to move to Edinburgh for the summer so that he may try to catch one of the fallen angels and try to find an explanation to this. But unfortunately a fallen angel falls at the feet of someone who doesn't wish to find it which is Jaya and it turns out that this fallen angel is alive. To be honest I don't really feel anything for this book. I enjoyed the writing in this. I think Sophie Cameron has very beautiful prose and I think that the discussions surrounding grief in this were really relatable. I really did feel for Jaya and how she navigated the death of her mother and the loss of her like sometimes girlfriend and then all while finding this being, this angel that fell from the sky and not knowing what to do. Despite having so much I think going for this book, it was alright. As you can see it's quite short but towards the end of the novel it just felt really rushed. I found it to be a little anticlimactic. The way I pronounced anticlimactic is so word lol wtf lol sorry. I understand that it had to end this way and there wasn't any real way for it to end but it just felt boring for the type of story that it was putting forth and I ended up just giving this a three stars. And that's it. Those are all the books I read in the month of February including the vlog that I've already linked up above. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts about these books. I love talking with you in the comments. If you would like to see more content from me, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell. It makes me feel really good. I don't know how to end these things, so I guess I will see you next time. Bye!